Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Jerusalem warns the international community of Iran's nuclear blackmail at a time when it calls for Israel's annihilation. Britain reaffirms its support of Israel's right to self-defense against terror and the Islamic Republic of Iran. The United States warns Iran that if it stalls the nuclear talks in Vienna, the U.S. will be forced to turn to other options. The Islamic Republic of Iran is exercising nuclear blackmail at a time when its senior commanders are openly declaring the Ayatollah regime's delusional yet evil intentions to annihilate the Jewish state. This is the message coming out of Jerusalem at a time when the P5 plus 1, including the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain plus Germany, are negotiating with Iran on the future of the latter's nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. Iran won't just keep its nuclear program. From today, they'll be getting paid for it. Iran doesn't hide its intentions. Just a couple of days ago, the senior command of Iran's armed forces declared, and I quote, we will not back off from the annihilation of Israel, not even one millimeter. Iran deserves no rewards, no bargain deals, and no sanctions relief in return for their brutality. I call upon our allies around the world, do not give in to Iran's nuclear blackmail. Alongside the strong words voiced by the Israeli premier, Jerusalem's top defense official who attended a signing ceremony for the construction of a new IDF intelligence headquarters in Israel's southern Negev region, proclaimed the new installation as vital to contend with the intensifying threat posed to Israel by the Islamic Republic and its proxies. And while Jerusalem does not have a seat at the table in Vienna, it seemingly refuses to sit idly by on the sidelines while threats which emanate from Iran are being deliberated. Defense Minister Gantz continued by asserting that while the Ayatollah regime is justly regarded as Israel's arch enemy, the people of Iran are not. <laughs> אזרחי איראן, הנאנקים בימים אלו תחת מחסור חמור במים, בחשמל ובפרנסה, הם קורבן של משטר ששם את שאיפתו להיות הגמון קיצוני באזור ובעולם, להיות כזה על חשבונם. אנו אומרים להם גם היום שחיים בעוני ובדלות אינם גזרות, גזרת גורל. לשותפינו אני אומר, שחייב להיות מחיר שיתבטא בסנקציות כלכליות ופעולות צבאיות בכדי שהאיראנים יעצרו את המרוץ הגרעיני ואת התוקפנות, האיראנ... את התוקפנות האזורית. מינסטר גאנס went on to reject allegations that Israel is outright to pose to a diplomatic track with Iran. איננו מתנגדים לשיחות, אך אסור לתת יד למריחות. איננו מתעלמים מהצורך הבינלאומי והאזורי להגיע לפתרון מול האיראנים, אך איננו פותרים את עצמנו כמדינת ישראל חזקה ועצמאית מלהעמיד את הפתרונות שלנו, להגן על עצמנו במו ידינו, שנחליט שכך צריך לעשות. The intelligence Israel relayed to the United States, Britain, France and Germany reportedly provided concrete evidence that Iran had implemented a series of technical steps to enable a final leap of uranium enrichment to 90% purity, which is the required level of enriched material to produce a nuclear weapon. Consequently, the lead nuclear negotiator of the Biden administration, Robert Malley, conveyed a warning to the Ayatollah regime stressing that if Iran thinks it can use this time to build more leverage and then come back and say they want something better, it simply won't work. In an interview to the BBC, Mali emphasized, quote, if that is Iran's approach, which is to try to use the negotiations as cover for an accelerated nuclear program, and as I say, drag its feet at the nuclear table, we will have to respond in a way that is not our preference. He further accused Iran that its nuclear program is putting the very essence of the deal negotiated back in 2015 at risk. 
Meanwhile, in London, Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid told a conference of the Conservative Friends of Israel organization that in contrast to present narratives adopted by many Western countries, as part of which any use of force is always wrong and that there is no such thing as a just war, the struggle against murderous terror regimes and organizations is more than justified. The struggle between law-abiding democracies and murderous terrorist organizations is not a struggle between narratives. It is a struggle between good and evil. Too many people have concluded that the strong are always wrong and the weak are always right. Even when the strong are law-abiding democracies like Britain or Israel, and you see that the attacks on 9-11, on the London Underground, on buses in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, that were not theoretical. We have the right to defend ourselves. Our children will not grow up in shelters under rocket fire, something the British know something about. This industry of lies uses democracy against democracy, international law against those who uphold it, our fairness and decency against us. Jerusalem's top diplomat continued by highlighting the absurdity to which reality has come to. The new president of Iran, the butcher from Tehran, who, in, who, who sentenced thousands of people to death, said in his first speech, I have always defended human rights. The terrorists of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine who slaughtered children in Israel, sleeping in their beds, claimed to be freedom fighters. Hezbollah members active in the slaughter of half a million people in Syria speak of tolerance. They assume that in democratic societies, everyone will simply freeze in the face of these lofty words. We must prove them wrong. Minister Lapid went on to emphasize that in contrast to the days in which Jewish children were helpless in the ghettos, today, in the face of murderous enemies, the Jewish people have an army and friends. And if someone tells us, as the Iranians, Hamas and Hezbollah do, that it is okay to kill my children because of their distorted interpretation of Islam claims that it is okay to kill Jewish children. They must know it's not going to happen. We are not going to get into a theological or ideological argument with them. We are going to defend ourselves from their evil and stand strong against their violence. The lesson we learned from listening to the radio in the ghetto hasn't been forgotten. 13-year-old Jewish children will no longer be victims. My children have an army. My children have the Mossad. My children are the sons and daughters and daughters of a free nation. And when I look around this room, I see another thing. My children have friends. The Israeli foreign minister noted, however, that the friendship will be tested in the next several months to ensure that the Islamic Republic of Iran does not acquire weapons of mass destruction. Our friendship will be reflected in the coming month in our shared determination to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon at all costs. In response to Foreign Minister Lapid, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who also addressed the conference, voiced London's support of Jerusalem's defensive actions against Tehran. And, and it is for the sake of peace that the UK supports Israel's right to defend itself with no equivocation, including from hostile states like Iran. And along with our European and American friends, we will continue to do everything we can to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. And as talks resume in Vienna, we hope that diplomacy can work but while the nuclear issue is the most urgent, Iran's overall behavior has to be.
to change. The attacks at sea, the support for terrorism, the destabilization of the region all form part of the same pattern. It is important to know that while the United States, Britain, France and Germany are seeking out a revived deal that would, quote, put Iran's nuclear program back in the box, not all of the participating powers have aligned interests. At a time when numerous Chinese and Russian companies, as well as individuals, are sanctioned for breaching U.S. sanctions against Iran, Beijing and Moscow are seemingly chiefly focused on having U.S. sanctions lifted as early as possible, rather than dealing with the threat posed by Tehran's nuclear progress. The Iranian delegation is very pragmatic and the, they focus on uh, sanction lifting as a priority, but in the meantime they realize other issues of relevance need to be discussed. But we all agree, as a first priority, we deal with uh, sanction lifting and we should address this first. The Chinese and Russian positions vis-à-vis -vis the talks in Vienna are naturally warmly welcomed by the Iranian delegation, which insists that all participating states, excluding the United States, have adopted Tehran's narrative. به نظر من این خودش یک دستاورد قابل توجه هست که همه کشورهای عضو گروه چهار به علاوه یک به مطالبه به حق جمهوری اسلامی ایران تن دادند و بر اون تاکید و تصریح کردند که باید ابتدا در واقع وضعیت تحریم های غیر قانونی رژیم آمریکا علیه مردم ما روشن بشه و بعد و بعد از اون نسبت به سایر موارد بحث و بررسی و تصمیم گیری بشه In contrast to the claim voiced by Ali Bagheri Kani European diplomats who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity asserted that wide gaps remain and that they are currently under the impression that Iran is once again stalling. Their concern was further reinforced by the coordinator of the talks, EU Foreign Affairs Political Director Enrique Mora, a vocal proponent of the 2015 deal, who noted that he feels positive that much can be done in the next weeks to come, yet there are still difficult issues ahead. There is a sense of urgency, but there is no fixed timeline on my mind because uh, there are still difficult issues ahead. First, difficult issues politically to be decided. And second, we have rather technical, complex technical issues when we will get to the implementation of the, of the different agreements on sanctions lifting and nuclear commitments. So I wouldn't venture a, a, a date for that. But at the same time, it's obvious that uh, we need to work and to go ahead. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Britain in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach Chag Chanukah Sameach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.